Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. Say what one more time. What? RadioWhat.com What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live in a living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability, get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. All right, party people. Well, you know, I have an internet radio station, and who am I going to be talking to? Well, none other than Brandon Daniel Brown. He's got an internet radio station, Outlaw Radio. Check that out. And we're going to learn a little bit about Brandon Daniel Brown. Uh, I found him on Instagram. He seemed kind of cool. He's got a lot of a lot of great uh, pictures that, that come up, a lot of posters of some old school rappers. So I'm guessing we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, I, man, I, I want to learn more about Brandon Daniel Brown and the Outlaw Radio up there in Canada. Yes, <laughs> our neighbors to the north. Let's, uh, oh yeah, what uh, shows do I have this week? My shows are Thursday. I'll be at the Old Post Barbecue in Russellville, Arkansas for the video dance party karaoke jam. They got some good barbecue and some nice frosty beverages for the adults. It's family friendly karaoke and uh, yes you're invited come on out to the old post barbecue in russellville arkansas that's thursday tomorrow night and let's see friday i'll be at the rab in conway arkansas that's my regular friday gig friday night it's the uh, video dance party karaoke jam they got the full bar this one is 20 21 and up they got the kitchen open and they also have, oh, a pool tournament. So if you want to make some money while you're hanging out at the Rab, I encourage you, come on out. That starts at 8 p.m. So the old post is 6 to 9, Russellville, Arkansas, Thursday. And then Friday night at 8 p.m. at the Rab. And then Saturday, I have a wedding. You're not invited, but I'm excited about doing a wedding on Saturday. Those are my favorite. I like weddings. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it with Brandon Daniel Brown. Calling Brandon Daniel Brown now. Hi, Brandon Daniel Brown, please. Uh, speaking, how you doing tonight? DJ Immortal? Uh, yes, that's me. I have you on the line on the What Makes You Famous program. How you? Uh, thank you very much. How you doing tonight? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have another DJ on the line. DJ Immortal. <laughs> what have you been up to? What are you doing up in Canada? Honestly, uh, just been uh, my uh, Outlaw Radio production has uh, currently relocated from Brockville, Ontario, to Prescott, Ontario. Me and my wife just did a big move to a new home and whatnot. So, uh, just uh, after this interview, I got to go back. I got to go back inside and uh, reset up the studio. How uh, moving always works out very well for you. Eh? <laughs> oh, I understand. I've moved what radio many times, and thankfully, I've been here for the last. Uh Ooh, last few years now and and, and it's yeah it's kind of tough to, to move things around especially if, if do you have uh, other people that come on the radio or is it a one-man operation? Uh, yes. uh what i do actually is um so for instance i do i have interviews every single week um right now um i have an outlaw radio team so i will i'm going to address them i have um so for instance it's all internet based mm-hmm. so it's I, I go live on spreaker every friday night at 8 p.m eastern standard time uh, but I have um, an outlaw radio team, as I call it. Um, it's a nonprofit organization, so outlaw radio doesn't make any money. We just love helping artists get on the map. So every single week, we have one artist come on. We uh, profile their music. We play their music live on the air. We uh, do about a 15, 20-minute interview. That way they get their voice heard. Uh, we make posters. We spread them all over uh, social media. And um, so in the background, I have my wife. Um, I have to give her a shout-out because, you know, happy wife, happy life. Um, what I do with her, she's my editor. 
So she's actually a book author herself, yes. but she writes books. So I make sh- she makes sure the grammar is all proper on the questions, and then she rewrites them out after I make all the questions and whatnot. Then I have a United Kingdom promoter. So what I do is I make up posters with all, all the time zones uh, for that country, and I print them off, mail them to him with business cards and stickers. He hands them out in uh, some UK pubs and whatnot. So his name's Graham Ke- uh, Grant Kent. Then we got an Australian promoter. His name is wow. Thomas Berryman. Um, I do the same thing for uh, for him, mail him business cards, stickers. Um, and then I have a Canadian promoter, but on the other side of Canada, out in Nova Scotia. He does the same thing, just helps promote. Then I have um, a, Un- a United States promoter. He's in Junction City, Kansas. And I do the same thing, like stickers, posters. So pretty much what I do is, since we don't get paid, Um, I'm slowly trying to bring out uh, merchandise for the show. That way we can try and make some money by selling merchandise. So what I do is since they don't get, since I don't, we don't get paid. None of us. Right. When I make the merchandise, I give them free merchandise to test out. So say we make coasters. I'm like, okay guys, I'm giving you guys like 10 coasters each. I'm mailing them out. Let me know what you think. So they get free merchandise when people, other people have to pay. Right. So it's just my way of being like, thanks, like showing appreciation. Absolutely. Man, D- Brandon Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal, I had no idea you were worldwide. And I know the internet radio, it, it, it's hit or miss. Uh, it, it, it is worldwide. It's, it's on the internet, the World Wide Web, if you will. And, but promoting it is one thing, and it looks like you have that sewn up. You're making contacts all over this planet and making sure that you're, you're – uh, your uh, artists are getting the the right promotion. You're putting them out there. So Outlaw Radio, uh, what types of artists are you, are you trying to promote or are you bringing into to your radio? Pretty much what I'm trying to bring into the radio here is, um, truthfully, if you don't mind, can I uh, talk about how it first started? Go ahead, please do. It, 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 actually, it actually ties into it. So yes. when I was younger, um, I, used to do, I used to try and do rap music. Um I ended up getting my jaw broken and whatnot, but that's a, that's an old story. Oh, for the oh radio, right? how did that so, happen? Um, um, I ended up going through a really bad abusive relationship. Oh, so man. I had uh, my jaw shattered, my uh, skull fractured. I almost died. So believe um, it. I, that's why I, I kind of talk a little bit of a list. So I can't rap very much anymore. But when I was rapping, mm-hmm. um, I was called Immortal Outlaw. Yes. Um, and uh, so what it was like, I had local shows around my town of Brockville. Like I used to open up at bars and whatnot, get paid like 20 bucks here and there, but I wasn't going anywhere with my music, because every time I tried to shop music, everyone would be like, no, I don't want a rapper. No, we don't, we're not interested in rap. Wouldn't even listen to my music. And I was sitting back, I'm like, what the heck, man? Like, nobody's with, nobody even wants a rapper. What do you mean nobody, nobody likes a rapper? <laughs> That's yeah, all I, you I, hear well, now. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, so pretty much what happened with that was, and then all that stuff with my jaw got broken and whatnot, right. I just look at it as, that's why I do a lot of radio. A lot of people that are trying so hard, because I look at it as, I don't know if you're to mumble rap, the people that just, blah, 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 I don't know what's how they speak, but a lot of those rappers are getting noticed, and the people that are actually having real meaningful lyrics aren't getting noticed. So that's when I come in, I want to be like, look, you have great music. I want to feature you, feature you on the air. And I tell them, I'm like, I know what it's like to be a rapper and feel like you're going nowhere. I want to be that guy to be like, look, Show them, show them that there's people out there that, that have interest in you. It brings their spirits up, and hopefully along the way, some national artists will hear it because we go on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Like we, I try and put every episode every single place as possible just so I can give these up-and-coming up artists recognition. And I have them so they, they actually feel like, okay, people actually listen to my music. It gives them like a spruce me up, you know what I mean, to keep going and pushing for your goals and your dreams. Brandon Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal. Once again, you are doing it. And and you started. Uh, how long ago did you start the internet radio, or or did you start in radio previous to that? Um, actually, I wasn't in radio at all. How it originally started was, um, I always wanted to do my own radio show when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I used to like be a little kid, have like the mic and a little old school tape recorder deck, yes, and just be like, oh, this is blah blah blah, like acting like you know, being a kid. I always had that dream. I've always wanted to be on radio because you always hear the voices. They always sound cool, fly, slick. You know what I mean? Back in the day, I was like, they probably get all the ladies, you know? (laughs) And um, I was little then. I wanted to do it, but I never really, I always looked up. You had to go to college for it and whatnot. And then one day I was sitting there. I was um, working at a job called Procter & Gamble. uh, They make 
balance sheets and whatnot. Yes. Um, the factory's closing next year here in Brockville, so they laid me off. Mm-hmm. I was trying, I was trying, I was trying. Couldn't find a job at this point. Just couldn't. I was having no luck at all. I was laying on the couch one day, and I was like, giving up. I'm like, I'm done. I looked at my wife. I'm like, I can't find no work. There's nothing here. Right. So then well, I just sat up and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create my own internet radio show. And then she's like, she looked at me and she's like, I'll support whatever you want to do, sweetheart. I'm like, I'm really going to do it. I'm going to try and see where this will go. So what I did was I got up, went on, went on my computer. And I remember like, I heard of this play a thing called Spreaker before. Mm-hmm. And you know, you can, you can't really make anything off of it, but I realized it's a hobby. It's something to do until I find current employment. Mm-hmm. So I did a show and I just started sharing the links through my Facebook and I was playing like this, my favorite old school rap, like Tupac, Biggie Smalls, the nineties rap. And I mean, it blew up like for my first show. I think I averaged 150 listeners. I don't even know how what? people were like, yo, I really want to hear more. Like, when are you going to do this? And I didn't have nothing at this point. Right. So it pretty much just kind of picked up from there. Okay. And uh, how it actually, how it really started, how it really started though, was um, when that sh- first show happened, I was sitting there and I was like, you know what? I'm like, I'm going to create an Instagram, a Twitter, get more exposure. Yes. So I started following my favorite rap artists. And um, my, one of my favorite rap groups is called The Outlaws. Uh, formerly, uh, Tupac founded them in 96. Mm-hmm. So what happened was I followed this guy named Deuce Deuce. He's a local Toronto, uh, Toronto, Ontario rapper. He works with Young Noble. I followed him. What didn't, didn't message none of these guys. I wasn't even planning on doing interviews at this point. And so I woke up, I went to bed after I followed all these people and set it all up, woke up in the morning, had a message from Deuce Deuce himself. He reached out to me. I was like, Hey man, I like your logo. I like the way you're doing your thing. He's like, I can tell you're brand new, but I have a, me and young noble. We have a brand new album out and I noticed you're Canadian. I would love to work with you and and, uh, help uh, promote the album. And I looked at my wife and I'm like, I'm dreaming. I'm still dreaming. (laughs) And I, so I showed her the message, right? And she's like, no, babe, like, that's legit. Like, wake up, you know, go take a shower, take a breather before you, before you call him, right? You want to sound professional. So mind you, I was completely didn't know what the hell to do. I didn't know what to do to talk to this man. Cause like, I wake up every morning and listen to his music. Right. And then I get to call the guy. So I'm like, oh God. So we talk, we set it up and I realize I've never done an interview in my life. <laughs> I don't even know if I can do it. So I had a few people that I knew that did music from like in the UK mm-hmm. and I messaged him. I'm like, yo, Rammer, do you want an interview? Like I need a practice interview to make sure everything's good. And he's like, yo man, I'd love to be on the radio. I'd love to be your very first interview. Yeah. So we did that. And like, people loved it. People were eating it up. People were like, yo man, you're a natural. And I'm like, okay. And then me and dudes did it. And after that, it just went crazy. Well, I tell you, Brandon, you're doing just fine right now. I mean, you're you're talking, you're you're flowing, and I stutter quite a bit. I've been in radio since 1986, and I remember rap in its heyday when it first started uh, with uh, Curtis Blow and Run DMC, and uh, yes, even the Sugar Hill Gang, and, and that that's my first taste of rap, and and I enjoyed it very much, and and I even got on my my techniques and and did my own little scratching. I was never as good as uh, as uh, was it. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff or or any of those goodies who are still doing it today, but uh, I I tried you know and and and, and I, I enjoyed that and and what I'm doing I'm I'm bouncing back a little bit uh, talking about when you were attempting to become a rapper and you rapped did you rap well do you feel like you I mean because I'm I'm envisioning Rabbit uh, just walking in uh, yes Eight Mile and, and here he is Brandon Daniel Brown DJ Immortal. Uh, doing a rap battle is that what happened is that is that how it went not really honestly how it went was i i i, I performed at bars right so yes. like they always say like I, I wouldn't say i was the best like you know what i mean right i had a lot of improvement to go through i wasn't i wasn't like oh record deal like that i most definitely needed some improvement sure um but i like they say at a bar you know the more drinks you have the better people sound right so <laughs> i never got booed off the stage i never did um but i feel that with myself you know for me to get to that state where i wanted to actually be i wanted to get big but yes. i always felt the fact that i really need to improve i i did i really did and then when all that happened with my ex i kind of just sat back and i gave up i i don't know why i did i was just so down on myself you know what i mean and when i met my wife she takes my dreams and she puts them on a higher pedestal than I put my own dreams on. So yeah. it's one of those things with me where I have a supporting wife and I, like, I've always wanted to, I realize me being a musician in the current country I'm in, 
current place I'm in. I'm a very small town. So, you know, I look at all the ups and downs, you know, do I really want to do this or could I do something better? I could benefit other people and I love helping people. That's my thing. I love it. Brandon so Daniel I Brown, call, yes, I, you want to do this, man. I, I, I tell everybody, follow their dreams. If you don't want to do a 9 to 5 working for Procter & Gamble, don't do it, man. Especially, yes, I'm so sad that they're closing down. You've lost that steady job. But the entertainment business, I tell people, the money's good, but the work's not steady. you got to hustle all the time. And you're a hustler, man. You, you're not even, and, and the best way to help yourself is to help other people. That's what this podcast is all about, man. They're learning about Brandon Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal, Immortal, who is helping other people. And you can do it from a small town because you have a little thing called the Internet. And that brings everyone in this whole wide world together, man. You're doing it on the Outlaw Radio, man. And I know I, 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 I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to know more about you and your artist, man, that you're promoting. To tell, tell me more. Continue. Well, if you- if you like, I actually got my book here with me because I figured we'd be talking about my artists and whatnot. Oh, um, yeah. I actually have a lot of I have interviews already booked up until pretty much middle of October. Um, so I'll start off with the very first one I did. So it was uh, Jay Rammer. He was from the United Kingdom. And then I, we had Deuce Deuce, which I talked about. Now, how did you um, do that one from the United Kingdom? Because I know in Ontario, um, I can do it on phone. Uh, anywhere in North America, I can do it on phone. But the ones I've done right. in Australia and in England, I've done them on Skype. Uh, wh- what do you do? What I normally do is Facebook Messenger. What I normally okay. do is I have a lot of because like, I realize Facebook everybody normally has it. Yes. Um, I have this uh, little cord that I have that I plug to my laptop, mm-hmm. and it can tether anything from your phone to the laptop. I tried Excellent. Skype once, mm-hmm. and um, I I literally did not get it to work. It wasn't working for me. Uh, and it. I had an artist call up. He could hear me. I could hear him, but the audience couldn't. Oh. So I, I, I realized, to me, that's unprofessional. I want to be as professional as possible. Excellent. Um, so I looked at it as that one. I ended up just, you know, telling the audience I'm going to redo this one, you know, at a later date, just because I felt to myself that if it's not up to, if it's not up to my own standards, it most definitely isn't up to everybody else's standards. Um, so what I did was I did the, that's when I started doing Facebook Messenger, and it's never failed me. There I mean, go. like, I can connect with worldwide people up there. So when people email me and they want to do an interview, I tell them, I like your music, I'm interested, here's my Facebook link, add me, we'll talk further. And that's when I start talking about the Facebook Messenger. Very good. Uh, I, well, right now I have you plugged in to a Zoom H4N Pro, uh, and that's a, a little, it's kind of like a task cam, but it's a Zoom, and I have a, a microphone plugged into one side and the phone plugged into the other side. So when I did use Skype, I just used Skype on the phone, and it sounded just fine. But then I still put it through the Adobe Audition, so it sounds better. So, yes, I, I not only want to teach people, I mean, uh, learn about people on this podcast, but I want to teach people how to make their own podcast, how to get their word out there. And, and you're getting... And I have to say, i actually been listening to your show, actually, before well, even before you even saw messages uh, that I don't link in the chat group. Uh-huh. I actually been listening to your show, man. I came across, and I have to say, you have some really extreme, really great artists. I mean, artists. You know, I even noticed you had a runner on there a couple weeks ago from Canada. I listened to. Oh yeah, he was a really cool guy. <laughs> That's cool. Well, see, man, and, and, and it's just people helping people. You cannot get yourself, you, you, you can't help yourself unless you're helping other people, man. This whole wide world needs to get together. And and, and you're up in Canada, man, and I'm, I'm here in Arkansas, central Arkansas, and we're just chatting. It's just a couple of guys getting to know each other. Uh, so tell me tell me more about your artist that you're promoting. Continue. Um, so like I said, I have Deuce, I had Deuce, Deuce, um, I had Actual as well. So Actual, he was, um, he's done work with the Outlaws as well. They're like, mind you, this is simultaneously right after Deuce. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I actually messaged Actual myself. I felt like I was going through a, I, well, we're not, not a power trip, but I was more like, um, I having good luck. Yes. So let's ride the wave with the good luck as we can, right? So Actual is one of my favorite singers. He's based out of Atlanta. So I, I have him on, had him on Facebook as friends. So I figured, you know, message him. What, what's the worst can happen? He can say no. Then, mm-hmm. okay, just say thank you very much and move on to the next one. So I messaged Actual, and uh, he was like, yeah, man. He's like, I would love to. You know, I heard your interview with Deuce. Like, it was actually really good. Pencil me in. So I'm like, okay, sweet. All right, party on. So we got Actual. Um, we had a guy named Michael J. Joseph. Mind you, this is my, like, fourth interview I've ever done. 
So this is before I really started figuring out what I really wanted to do with the show. So he wasn't a musician. This is the only one that I've interviewed that wasn't a musician. Right. Uh, my buddy, he was, um, he went through a lot of life, life problems. He's, he's out in Richmond, California. He went through a lot of personal life issues and he's a fitness guy. So he, he looks, he channels all his negative and bad energy through running. And on uh, July 4th, which is like the American version of Canada Day. Right. He yeah. wanted, I like how you run. said he that. In, That's great. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to um, do a marathon. Like, he wanted to run. Like, he was a runner. Like, I mean, like, I don't know how he can do it. He can run, like, 15 miles and then back home and then just be fine. And I'm, like, talking to him on the phone. I'm like, how? Whoa. How do you do it? I, I, would, I would die, like, a half a mile. <laughs> you know what I mean? I believe it. <laughs> I think I did so one marathon I'm back in, like, in how, 92. I'm like, how do you do it, right? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, so he starts telling me with his marathon he's running, and he wants, and he's like, he's really pumped for it. And I'm like, dude, why don't you come on my show? I'm like, I would love to promote that, man. Like, you're doing it because it's something you love to do. And I was like, I know a lot of my listeners really wouldn't care, but that's okay. It's my show. I'm like, you know what I mean? I would love to have you on the show. And me and him, I think we just talked like this on the air for a good hour. And then I realized, like, you know, we're talking for an hour. I need to shut this down, right? But he was a great guy. Um, that's the only non-rap uh, artist I had on the show. And then after that, I had Killa J, Big Script, Rosie Rothschild, which he is in the U.K. as well. Yeah. And then this was my other uh, national artist. His name is Stormy Coleman. Um, he did work with the Outlaws as well. Um, I believe in like 2003, actually. I want to give a shout out to him, actually. He is actually right now doing an uh, Australian tour right now. So I want to wish him, you know, uh, safe travels. Me and him have been talking since our interview. And this is when I really started noticing that the artists really like, really started to like me because I grew up loving Stormy Coleman. He was actually the one guy I would sit on the school bus as a kid listening to that album he did with the Outlaws. And I'd be like, yo, this music straight up is awesome. And then I got to interview him, right? Yeah. Um, then we had Six Styles. Um, he's an underground guy. G Ram, Drew Hart, and Gemini. Kalon, the artist, he actually worked with um, Tupac's cousin. And how then? And then on June sixteenth, this is my favorite one. I think um, before the interview happened, I'm going to be truthful. I'm a man. Everybody has to have a cry. Um, right. This was the dream here. This was something that I've always dreamed about. Um, Tupac Shakur. Uh, he is my absolute favorite artist. I mean. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be not gonna lie, I'm borderline obsessed. Like, I have posters all over my walls, and you know I'm, I'm a fanboy. You know what I mean? And um, no, but he, his music he, look, actually he, he's helped me last, get through a lot of. He's one of the last of the true rappers, man. It just he told a story. A lot of times, I I think he told too much in his story. He named names in his raps, and and I think. That might have been to his demise, man, but uh, that's just a whole nother thing that 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 nobody really knows the, the all the truth about. But yeah, Tupac definitely was a, he, he was a storyteller, so, man. Just so I'm going to say this that way, that people can actually understand the whole feeling of how I felt with this interview because this next one's huge. Yes. Um, so well, it's huge for me, but per se, right? Um, not probably not to a lot of other people. So what happened was when I was younger, I was. Um, I grew up in foster homes and group homes and whatnot. I was bullied nonstop, you know what I mean? Nonstop at home school. And one day I really wanted to end my life. I'm not going to get into the whole details, but I didn't tell nobody. I just stole a knife from the group home, went upstairs, barricaded my door shut. Oh, yeah. Wanted to end it. This point, I've never heard Tupac's music. Um, so what happened was I ended up just barricading my door, turning on the radio. Cause like I said, I didn't, I didn't want no one to know. I wasn't crying for help. This was serious. I wanted to go. I wanted to end. I wanted the pain to go away. And um, I ended up putting a knife into my arm. And long story short, Tupac's music came on. I heard the DJ go, this is, uh, Terry, we're going old school. Tupac changes. And when I first mm. heard his first verse in that song, mm. when I wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? Mm -hmm. It's weird. I completely did a 360. I was like, what the? F I, don't yeah. know, I, don't, like, I don't know if I can swear. No, but I'm gonna I, be like, I, I don't know what the. But, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what the heck I, could, I should do. Right. What, what the f am I doing, right? So yeah. I pulled the knife out of my arm, wrapped my arm up, and I sat there and cried. I listened to his lyrics, and I cried. I was uh, 13 years old at this time. Never heard Pac in my life, but he, he saved my life. I physically feel that it was it was meant to be. I really, I don't believe, I'm not a big believer in God. Um, I believe there's, mm -hmm. a better, there's a better good out there, but mm -hmm. I want to say, I, I believe that everything in life happens for a reason. I believe that day, his music actually did save my life because I, I really would have done it. It's just the lyrics is what made me change my mind. Man, I'm glad and you're here. So after he, after that, after I, after that happened, you know, 
I just told a group on my trip, I'll cut my arm on a heat register. You know what I mean? Just something stupid because I didn't want them to know. So and when was the that, first time? Kept, got, wait, when was the first time that you told this story that that you that you were actually trying to kill yourself, man? Honestly, I kept it to myself for a long time. Um, the first person I told was my wife. And mind you, me and my so, wife, we got married when I was 23. So two years ago, right? Yeah. Um, I told her that because like, I knew she always probably wondered, why are you so obsessed with Tupac? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, I, pro- I, I knew she always had that feeling. She probably thought so, but she never mentioned it. Right. Right. Um, so one day I just told her, I'm like, you want to know why I love him so much? And I told her that story. And um, how it really happened was I ended up talking to Young Noble. That was the second person I ever talked to this before Outlaw Radio happened. Yes. He has this thing called the Outlaw University Hotline. And mind you, after Pac, Pac and the Outlaws, those guys are like my, like when I'm upset, I'm angry, I throw on their music and everything will make me feel better. I got to talk to Young Noble on the phone. It was a, it was a hefty price because it's three ninety nine a minute. <laughs> um, but it was worth it. Like it was well worth it. Yeah. I talked to Young Noble on the phone and... Um, I cried. I mean, I couldn't hold it back. I cried on the phone with this man. I bawled my eyes out. And um, after I stopped crying, after like a minute or two, um, I told him my story about how I almost tried to, how I wanted to kill myself. You know, you helped me. You and Pac, like, I'm serious. You guys really saved my life. If it wasn't for you or your music, I don't know where I'd be today. So, like, we talked for 15 minutes. We had a good talk. And then after that, I realized, you know what I mean? This story can really help others. And really help others, you know, be like, okay, you know, there's more life than living. I went from being a kid in a foster home and group home. I went from not being liked, bullied all the time, that could never get a girl to even look at me. Mm. Now I have a beautiful wife, a beautiful home. Um, you know, I got to, I get to interview amazing people. So if anybody that is listening to this and you feel down and depressed, you know, a lot of people will tell you, oh, suck it up. Don't, don't listen to that. You know what I mean? Depression is a real thing. And it does happen to people and anxiety. But I want to let you know, I have anxiety every single day. But mm-hmm. I talk to artists and you might think, how do you do it? I have my own coping mechanisms to actually do it. And I want to let everybody know that's listening. You know what I mean? You can do anything that you put your mind to. You just got to keep your head up, stick your chest out and handle it, man. Yeah. Life will get better. There's no need to commit suicide, man. So it might seem like a crappy time in your life. But no matter what, things will always become a positive down the road. You might not think so now, but I can promise you, if you listen to my story, things will get better. Life is not always going to kick you in the butt. So what year did you go upstairs with that knife? Um, so I went to the group home in 2005. Right. I was 11 then. Um, I was 13, so I would say roughly 2007. Okay. And then how did you get through that, man? Because people have to know that, look, it, 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 at 13, you are, are ready to end it all. What it, what pressure are, are you having? And, and was it the group home that was bad? or Man, how, it was how mostly did you every, everything, to be honest. Um, I ended up there because when I was eight years old, um, my mother pretty much gave me up. Um, I'm going to be truthful. I'm not going to lie. I, she always told me that like somebody called uh, Children's Services and made a lie that she was beating me. But I found out when I was older because I found the documents when I was helping her move. And I read that she actually signed, signed me over because she'd rather be with her boyfriend. Um, me, and my, me and my mother, we made amends. I realized you only have one mom and, yeah. you know, people make mistakes in life. And I realized even now she's trying to, trying to be there for me. So I want to say, you know what, she made a mistake and I just have to be the bigger man about it. Um, but how that that's how it happened. And honestly, to answer your other question, how I dealt with it, I, I really don't know. I think after that, I just lost myself in music. Was, um, it, I mean, was there any my, counseling my, my, at the group home at all? Anybody? Not really, no. Um, pretty much the group home staff would look at you yeah. and just be like, suck it up and walk away. Like, they didn't care. They were making minimum wage working at a group home, right? right. So at the end of the day, like, they're just making a paycheck. Um, there was, so I have to say there was some staff that really did care about us boys. And, you know what I mean? If, they're, if they ever get a chance to listen to this, they know who they are. There's a yeah. few of them that really really helped me through a lot of stuff, but I never told them what really happened that day. I think that was just for me and no one else. Cause if I was to say Tupac saved my life, I would have gotten made fun of more because he's a black man. All these boys were older. You know how the whole thing is like black people hate white people and mm. people have those stereotypes and whatnot. So I just realized that maybe it's best to keep it to myself. I just lost myself in music. I would, 
um, fill my iPod up with old school rap. Um, right. And I would just go to school, headphones, and I realized that was my coping mechanism. You could see people flapping their gums and looking at you, but you couldn't hear them if you had music in. So like all day, every day was music. Brandon That's Daniel Brown. I went through a lot of batteries. <laughs> DJ Immortal, Outlaw Radio. You you are actually telling the story of a rapper, man. You have you had no choice but to become a rapper, a storyteller, because you have a story to tell, man. You've had life experiences, and, and you're at a young age. You're half my age, and you've had a rough a rough start of it. I mean, I'm I'm so glad that you found love and you've got this great woman behind you because yeah, I can already tell this is that she. If your life wasn't saved yet, she is definitely putting your life together, helping you out, man. And I'm glad you're building this life together. And congratulations on the new actually, house. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, thank, thank you very much, actually. Uh, it was a bad situation we were living in. We were dealing with a lot of uh, health issues with our apartment, but we ended up getting out and finding something 10 times better. I'm actually doing this interview ta- talking on my front deck, <laughs> uh, talking on my uh, back deck, actually, my balcony. So I realized cool. it's a beautiful night, and what's a beautiful night to do an interview, right? Yeah, and and, and like I said, the internet and, and, inter- and Wi-Fi, you could do it from anywhere. I, I've done interviews out in the middle of a park, and I'm glad you have Perfect. the night sky there in beautiful what is it uh, ontario you, you moved over to uh from uh, I, brookville I, I brockville from, to prescott uh, Brock, prescott yes <laughs> now okay I, mean, Bro- I actually like this town it's pretty small but I, it's actually really nice people are very nice here and i'm not used to i'm not used to being nice 24 7 so, so is brockville, it's different but i'll get used to it is brockville pretty rough for canada i mean because well, you well, know here in the states I, we think canada canadians are just great man <laughs> no people just love everybody up there <laughs> There's uh, some some Canadians that are nice. Um, Brockville, um, I, it's my hometown, right? So yeah. it's so hard to actually put it put it in proper words. I can't talk bad about it, but uh, we had um, and I don't, I, don't, I can't blame the mayor. Uh, just, we had a lot of great stuff, but a decade ago, mm-hmm. um, they just they the town went 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 downhill very badly. We lost our mall. Um, there's nothing to do for kids around, so drugs oh, are running wow. through Brockville very bad and. It's it, it's my hometown, right? So it's where I was born. But I just realized if I'm me and my wife are trying to start a family, mm. you have to get out. You can't raise your family in that environment. Yeah. And I just look though. I look out for what's best for my family, right? I wouldn't want to. I got brought up in a very bad environment. I never met my father. Gotcha. So Same. when me and my wife oh, were no, trying to have a I, kid, I mine. so me and my wife were trying to have a family. So when I have a kid, I want to be the best father I can be. Yes. I can already say my kids are going to be spoiled rotten. So. <laughs> Ah, uh, do it, man. Give, give them every chance. Uh, yeah, spoil them rotten. Do it. Uh, I'm so glad for you, man. And, and any kids on the way or any kids so far? Uh, none yet. We're okay. trying. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm glad um, you, you, you got back in, in touch with your mom and, and everything's going well now with, with, with your mom? Oh, everything's going well, yeah, actually. I just talked to her a couple hours ago and whatnot. Uh, everything's going well well back home. I just I just realized, you know, with Brock Fly, I had to get up and leave. It's one of those things where I feel that it would be better for me. Like like I said before, I still deal with the anxiety and depression, right? right. So um, just being in that environment because my ex-girlfriend, the one that brutally assaulted me, I'm going to be truthful. Uh, it's hard for me to come up and say it's my first time ever being on radio, live audience, you know, on-demand listeners telling this but i i, I I'm, I'm not gonna lie when she almost murdered me i, I got scared right oh. so me being out of that current town where she is i feel a lot more like relaxed i feel like i can look at my wife and be like babe i'm gonna go grab some milk at the store and not have to watch my back you know what i mean um but i look at it as i'm just in a happy place right now and i just really hope that uh at law radio is doing some really great things but I was doing some really great things in the three months it's been on. We've been doing our thing since April 12th of this year. So it's only been going on for three months. Three months. So, and you've been three, promoting it all over the world already. Uh, honestly, I don't know how I did it. I, think <laughs> I don't I just, know how you did it either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be truthful. I think this... I, I, all I can do is laugh, but it's like me, I don't believe in myself either. I still feel yeah. like I'm going to wake up one day and I can have the radio station, right? Yeah. Um, but the the interview I was tell, about, to tell, about to tell with the Tupac thing, um, I interviewed Tupac's first cousin, Kendrick Lusain. Come on! Um, I, how that happened was, um, I'm, like I said, I'm a huge Pac fan. So yes. I realized his birthday's coming His birthday's coming up June 16th, and I want to do an outlaw radio birthday bash from like playing nonstop Tupac yes. um, interview at Tupac fan, bring on a big Tupac fan like myself and just talk Pac for 20 minutes. Right. 
Yes. Because obviously I'm not going to message Pac's family. Like I, like I said, then I didn't think I was reaching that big. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know Kendrick Hussein was following me on Instagram. Okay. I didn't <laughs> even know this. So what happened was he messed, he, he I commented on the poster and he's like, yo, that photo is dope, bro. Right. And then he's like, right, Call right. Me. I see the poster on your Instagram. It's fantastic. Yeah. So he said, he said, call me. And I'm like, oh my God. So I look at my wife. I started jumping up and down like little girl. I'm like, oh my God. Kendrick Hussein wants me to call. Oh my God. <laughs> my wife's like, okay. Like who, who at first she at first, she was like, who's Kendrick? I'm like, <sighs> like hyperventilating. I'm like, Pox, Pox cousin, Pox cousin. <laughs> you know what I mean? So mind you, uh, I, I call Solo the nerf. I, I don't call him. Okay. Yes. I give him my number because it's like, you want, he wants to call. You can call me. Right. You know what I mean? So he dialed me up, and next thing you know, about maybe 20 minutes after I gave him my number, um, I get a call coming in from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Sure. And if a lot, a lot of Pac fans know, his family tends to live there. Mm-hmm. So I answer it, and next thing you know, he goes, what's the word, Bugaloo? And I'm like, <laughs> so at first I'm like, he starts talking like a friend, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> so I, I just sit there, grip the side of my couch. <sighs> take a deep breath and I go, how's it going, man? How you doing? Just trying to talk normal. <laughs> like, I mean, my wife looked at me, my pupils are huge. I'm staring at the floor and I'm just gripping the couch really hard. And I'm just like, how you doing, man? Talking normal. My wife's just kind of looking at me like, are you all right? And mind you, the next thing you know, he goes, yeah, man. He's like, how can you, he's like, what's going on with this Tupac birthday celebration? He said it like he was angry, like he was joking, but he was angry, right? right. He sounded like it. And I'm like, oh, God, I pissed him off. Like, I pissed off the estate. No. You know how I want to get recognized, <laughs> right? And he's like, you know what I think of that? He's like, you know what I think of that, man? You know what I think about that? He goes, I, and then he put the F in his word. He's like, I love it. I love it so much. He's like, yo. And I'm just like, and he's like, he's like, I can tell you're nervous, man. You know, it's okay. I'm just bugging you. He's like, I love it, bro. I love it, man. But he's like, and then he, he's, he's Islam. So he was like, alhamdulillah, and how, yeah. how they speak, right? Yeah. And he goes, um. He goes, Mushilla, how would you like, how can you have a Tupac celebration show without his fam? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Right. And then he's like, well, how about this? He's like, you can still interview that fan. He's like, I'm not going to ask you to take him off because, you know, that's prior engagement. You know, it's all about business. Right. But he's like, he's like, I'm doing a five part documentary with, um, with, uh, about Tupac and I would love to promote it. And right then and there, I'd jump up out of my out of the couch, like instantly. Yeah. And he's like, I would love to come on your show that day and promote it. Yes. And he's like, how quickly can you come up with the questions? And I'm like, Ugh. like, I just start stuttering. So mind you, I told him, I'm like, look, man, I'm like, if it wasn't for your, and that's when I told Kendrick how much Tupac means to me and how much this means to me. Right. Yeah. And he's like, and that's why I hit you up. He's like, I can tell, man. He's like the way. Tell the me way you hit record when you were talking to him. No, I didn't. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't expect this at all. Personally, man, oh, I man. didn't, I couldn't believe it. So what happened was with that, I ended up, we ended up doing the interview Good. and we t- I found out Tupac was a Muslim. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be truthful. Now I never knew that. I never knew he was a Muslim at all because it yeah. doesn't do with lyrics. Right. Um, but I found out he was a Muslim. He talked, uh, he wanted a controversial interview. He, I, at first, I wasn't going to ask anything about the night in Vegas, nothing about that. Sure. So I had, originally, I had questions like, how, you know, what's your most favorite memory with Pac? Can you tell us something about Pac you don't know? Yeah, what was Pac like? Balls, the, I get it. Like, you know, like nice questions that everybody else knows. Mm hmm. Um, cause I don't want to offend them. Everyone knows Tupac State. You offend them once, you don't get a second chance, third bye. Gone. Aww. So, um, what happened was he looked at me. He's like, you know what? I like the questions, but scrap them. And I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> mind you, it's Puck's cousin. They say scrap them, scrap them. You know what I mean? No questions, no buts. Let's do it. Yeah. He's like, I want, I want gritty questions. I want controversial that nobody has the balls to ask me. And I'm like, oh god. I'm like, um, so what are the do's and don'ts? He's like, free for all. Give me nine questions, controversial. So there's one thing I've always wanted to know. Okay, and I'm gonna. If, if anybody wants to listen to the interview, it's on our YouTube page, um, it. Outlaw Radio O for O for L. But I got to say this: um, how we went about that was, I asked him, and this one was really hard for me to ask because, you know, it's one of those questions everybody wants to know: sure. who killed Tupac? Yeah, he never said a name, but um, you, he pretty much says we all know who did it. Yes, and let's just say he wanted to. Um, I was trying to put the right, pick the right words because I was really shocked when he said it. He pretty much said that um, Death Row Records, Suge Knight did it. 
Mm. He didn't say Suge Knight's name, but he's like, there were some people he wanted to get away. I don't know. I feel like I feel happen. like we got to throw a allegedly in there somewhere, <laughs> just so so we don't get in trouble. He, there, there, we said yeah, allegedly. Yeah. Next, allegedly, continue. Allegedly, he, he, he never said Shug's name. He never said Death right. or Shug's name. He never said that. Right. He just it was, he, it was allegedly. Like if he, if you know the story and you really know Pac, you would you would be able to be like, oh, okay, I see where he's getting at. Yeah. But he never yeah. said it was him. He just said we all know. What he's like, you know what I mean? We have an idea. Right. You know what I mean? But he was trying to talk third party. Because at the end of the day, you do not want to get caught up in that. Correct. That's one big conspiracy theory. Um, Correct. But that interview I've, went I've well heard many I, stories of it. But you talked to someone who, uh, you talked to the blood of your hero, man, of your idol. This is great. Uh, how that, and honestly, I, I still have to do it sometimes. And Kendrick still keeps in touch with me. Honestly, I'm going to be truthful. Like, Beautiful. I have his number in my cell phone. You know how yeah. weird that is? Like, you're, you grew up idolizing like his cousin like his his aunt his mother is um gloria cox which is castro from the outlaws mom and tupac's aunt afini's sister by blood so like when i did when i interviewed him i told him i messaged him like thank you so much man um it was an absolute honor like i reached out to him when i was like you know i have your number but i will delete it off my phone because <laughs> that way my phone gets lost he's like no man keep it we'll keep in touch he yeah. calls me from time to time we just talk about random stuff and it's weird because it's like I look at his cousin all over my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> That's cool. But it's just well, one I'm... of those things where I feel so blessed to do it because I even had, um, I have Baby EZ coming on next month. Oh, Baby cool. EZ from, uh, which is EZ's third son. Come on. Um, I've been, yeah, man, I really do. Um, another, I have to give a shout another out. Another great storyteller, to... man. I have to give a shout out though because I didn't get that one myself. I'm going to be truthful. I have to give a shout out to my buddy Christopher Kleiss at CWK Promotions out in <laughs> out in uh, Arvada, Colorado. He owns a promotion company, and me and him are good friends. And um, he wanted to provide me with Baby Easy because I was doing well, and he wanted to get Baby Easy on the show. So I have to give all credit to him. You know what I mean? Um, I have Derek right on Facebook. Uh, me and him, I think, exchanged one or two messages. But he, it was all Chris that made that happen. So I got to give a big thank you to him. Well, you know, I'm going to be bragging tomorrow. I have uh, Brandon Daniel Brown, a DJ Immortal from Outlaw Radio's phone uh, number in my phone. And I'm telling everybody, ah, you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because when I go to the, I normally don't have locks on my phone. But when I go to the beach or something like that, because yeah. I have nothing to hide from my wife. You know what I mean? I, right, I, don't, I right. believe if you have a lock on your phone. They don't show you hiding something. So when I go to the beach, I put a lock on my phone. If someone steals my phone, right. I'll have like Stormy's number, Kendrick's number. Um, <laughs> for instance, I just interviewed, I did my very first prison interview. I don't know if you heard of Thug Life, Tupac's rap group. You probably, most, if you know Run DMC, you probably know Thug Life. Yeah, I, one of the most controversial rap rap groups ever. I, I don't I know that group, but I know Run DMC. I mean, shoot. Uh, tell me about Thug Life. Tell me about your uh, um, prison. So Thug, Thug Life, they didn't really, uh, it's Tupac's rap group. He created this before the Outlaws. Okay. Um, gotcha. So it, it consisted of Big Psych. Um, God bless his soul. He died in 2016. Uh, Big Psych, um, Tupac's half-brother, which is uh, which is Matulu Shakur's son, uh, Mo Prem Shakur, mm-hmm. uh, Macadocious. Um, so yeah, Tupac, sorry, um, Big Psych, Mo Prem Shakur, Macadocious, and last but not least, Rated R. Um, rated R, he, um, I don't know the exact full story, so I, I'm not going to get elaborate on what happened because I don't like talking about something unless I know the full situation, but he ended up, um, defending himself and he got a murder sentence. He is currently in, uh, San Quentin State Prison, um, doing life a bit. Um, he had a chance of parole in 2032. He's been in there for 15 years. Mm-hmm. How it happened, how I interviewed him was um, I found his uh, uh, jail address on Twitter. Some person posted it, and I'm like, what's the worst can happen? Write the guy a letter, talk to him. We've been pen pals, actually, for three months straight. No way. Writing letters back and forth. He asked me, he sent me a picture of what he looked like. So I took I took a picture of myself holding the Thug Life Volume 1 CD with Tupac and Snoop Dogg in the background. Yeah. He wrote me back, and, and he's like, that brought me to tears, man. He's like, I haven't seen that album in so many years. It's so good to have such genuine fans because I guess a lot of people are like sending them letters but asking for an autograph and then never talking to them again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've been that one fan that hasn't asked for anything. Never asked for one thing, just talking back and forth. To me, I don't want an autograph. I Just having a letter from the man you've listened to your whole life, 
that's good enough for me. That's an autograph to me. Yeah. Having a letter. I'd rather have a full letter than a damn. He's giving me his time. That's even more better than an autograph. So The t- fact that he's, even though he's sitting in jail at this time, man, that he's giving me. So I, I'm looking on your Spreaker, and you have uh, Rated R. That's your, your latest interview. It's a nice 45-minute interview. I haven't listened to it. Is, is that where you keep – is that – your podcast is hosted on Spreaker? Uh, hosted on Spreaker, yes. Um, oh, fantastic. And also the RRS feed distributes all over Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, iHeartRadio, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm not having a brain fart. Yeah, here. just everywhere you get podcasts. Yeah, Apple, and all that. Now the yeah, Apple but, yeah, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts. Like it's everywhere. I just try my best. So I find a site, even if I don't know what the site is, man. I'm like, you know what? Somebody else does. Well, Submit good. I, I'm adding you to my feed, man. I listen to podcasts all the time, and I, I'm seeing that you have all your interviews uh, that that were there. Oh man, it's nice that people could find them. Uh, all your your episodes are, are right on Spreaker. So fantastic, Brandon. And Daniel it's one of those Brown, things where, man. when I like with rated R one though, man, uh, how how it originally happened? I never, I just gave him my phone number. Yes, because I know people in jail can do three ways. So I didn't even ask for an interview at this point. I ended up just saying, "Hey, man, you know what I mean? Um, you know, here's my phone number." And I'm like, "If you can't get a hold of me, here's my wife's number." Like I asked my wife first, obviously, and then I'm like, "Look, I'm like, I understand, you know, you're in jail." You know, it's rough. Stuff happens, though, man. But I want to let you know, if you ever need to speak or talk, I'm like, you can call me. We can talk. I'm like, that way it's someone out of your whole circle. You can just vent. And you don't have to worry about nothing getting back to anybody. We can just talk. You know what I mean? And he, and he, next thing you know, I send that letter off. Two weeks later, he calls me. I was about 15 minutes before I go live on the air, right? So I'm sitting there getting the stream ready. You don't know all about that. And um, my, my wife's phone rings. Well, sorry, my phone rings. And it's a California number. And I was interviewing a guy, I believe, in the UK or somewhere out there. Oh, so I'm the like, that time. ain't him. Yes. So I'm like, damn, God. So I'm like, damn, collection agencies, right? Or one of those spam numbers. So I just right. toss my phone in my bed and be like, damn it, I'm busy. Then my ne- next thing you know, my wife's phone simultaneously calls the same number. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Then it kind of like, look at my wife. I'm like, babe, just pick it up. So she picked up the phone. And then it was some girl being asking for me. And, and so I, my wife hands me the phone. And I'm like, she had that look on her face where it's like, it's a girl. Next thing you know, should I hear is like, "Hey, yo, Brandon, it's, it's Yanni. I got raided on the line on the other line. I'm gonna patch you in." And I'm like, Ooh. "I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I'm just oh. like, I'm not ready for this." So he asked me what I was doing. He's like, "Yo, B, what's going on, man? How you doing, bro? It's good to actually hear your voice." And he starts going on about the picture, how it made him cry, and you know that he's doing high spirits. He's like, "But what are you up to, dog? What are you up to right now, B?" And I'm like. Uh, just about to go live on my radio show. And he's like, so he was quiet for a second. He goes, wait, he's like, and obviously, you know, he said the, the um, MF, like, you know what I mean? Right. He's like, mom, look, really? You got a radio show? He's right. like, dog, why didn't you tell me that? And I'm like, to be honest, dude, I'm like, I like talking to you, just me and you, man. I'm like, I, I'm like, just because I don't, I'm like, I don't, I didn't want you to think just because me and you were writing letters that I want to get an interview. I'm like, dude, this right here is good enough for me. Like I, your album, with Pac helped me through a lot of shit, bro. I'm like, so this right, is an right. honor, just this. And he's like, yo, dude, pencil me in, dog. He's like, I've been in here for 15 years. I got a lot of shit I want to get off my chest. Sorry, oh. sorry my language, but that's what he said, right? Yes, yes. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, I'm like, if this is what you want to do, sure, man. I just, I just don't want to, I'm like, you know, I don't want to bombard you. That's why I, I just want to be friends with you. He's like, dude, you're not, we're not friends. And he pauses for a second, and I'm like, oh, man, you know what I mean? He's like, we're family, Doug. We're oh. family. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. So we do, we do the interview. He's like, okay, I, I got to let you go. I got to go call some lawyers and whatnot. But he's like, I'll call you back on Saturday, and uh-huh. we'll set up a date. So I'm like, because obviously he has to get a certain time when he gets out of his cell. Right. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, okay. I'm like, he ain't going to call me back. I'm like, I get off the phone. I'm staring one spot giggling. I'm like, <laughs> there's no way. I'm like crying and giggling at the same time. Sure. Okay. Like it's a weird. And I'm like, no, no, that's not going to happen. He ain't going to call me back. I'm like, that was his nice way to say, screw you. He's off the phone. Yeah. So Saturday comes, my phone rings. Huh. He's like, all right, bro. He's like, the guard said I can get out of my cell tomorrow night. I'm going to call you 6 p.m. my time. So that's around 9 p.m. yours. He's like, be ready, bro. Get the questions ready. Let's get it done. And I'm like, oh, God. Okay. So I got the questions done. 
And that's my most, and I aired it just last night. I aired it because I want to build the hype up, right? Right. You don't want to just, I want to build the hype because this is something good. Um, I actually had my very first technical difficulties last night. Um, cause like I said, we, me and my wife moved. Um, so we were supposed to get my internet hooked up yesterday. Oh. We didn't. Oh. So it, it's up, it's my, it's up today, mind you. So I was going live on my cell phone data. So I had to switch all my freaker stuff to my phone and because I don't like going back on times, but I should have postponed it. I should have, but I had my first amateur mess up. <laughs> so right, right. I got the show done. That's why it's 45 minutes. Normally my shows are about two hours, two hours and 10 minutes. Right, right. I just didn't want it to mess up a second time. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to play some music like I normally do. Then I'm going to play the interview and then I'm going to say, that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's not a lot of radio special. It wasn't like it was a pre-taped interview. Thank goodness. Yes. Because that would, uh, but I look at it as I'd rather happen with a pre-taped interview than something else. So yes. just because of the inconvenience, I know a lot of people don't want to listen to music. They want to hear the interview. So I uploaded the interview separately on our YouTube page as well. So yes. if you want to just hear the interview itself or you want to listen to the music as well, like I said before, at Law Radio Will Pharrell on YouTube, you yes. check that out for sure. Yes. Well, I'll definitely put all the, all the links in the show notes so people know where to find you. So, oh man, I'm stoked. And you, man, you do have some stories. <laughs> uh, Brandon, man, Trust DJ me. Immortal. And, and, and you did the jailhouse interview. I wouldn't expect it to be more than, than 45 minutes. I, I mean, how long can uh, these folks stay on the phone? And I, I feel it for was them. about a 16 minute interview. I would say it was a 16 minute interview. Yes. Um, they, I, I first thought, hey, you know, if you actually listen to the interview, I had to um, merge two bit to, um, recordings together right how it happened was uh you can hear actually during the interview it would say uh, some lady will cut over his voice and go this call is being recorded you know <laughs> what i mean the whole like automated system thing yes. so like you can tell he's been used to it because he stopped talking and he'd go back to what he was saying before but you actually heard during the interview you have 60 seconds remaining so he I finishes half of his answer then you can hear it in his voice where he's like mm, good god i Darn it. You okay. know what I mean? So he goes, he goes, let me call you right back. So he did. I mean, like maybe a minute later, he tried it. What I did was I stopped the thing. I just, um, how I did it was I, when I recorded, I put like outlaw radio, uh, rated our part one. Right. And then right. when he called back as it was ringing, I just, so it's, it does, you wouldn't even sound, it doesn't even sound like it was even spliced. All you hear is let me call you right back. Right. And then I go, all right, sounds, sounds good. And then like a second later, you hear, oh, welcome back. So oh, you sweet. don't really notice very much. Like if you're really into the interview, you won't even notice that we, that it's spliced. Well, Brandon, Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal, uh, another piece of advice. Uh, if you want to do a, a backup recording, you can always use the, your Google Voice phone and that's free. You could set up a Google Voice. And if they call you, I think you press four and it records automatically and they email you the recording. I've actually never known that. For I'm free. Honestly, I, want to say, I appreciate that, man. That's, yep. that's actually a really good idea. I've never, yeah. never knew that one. Yeah. So you can always record it into your recording device, your computer or what have you, but also have the Google phone as a backup. That's actually really cool. I've never known that, man. Thank you so much for that information. Yep. Google voice for free. All right. Excellent, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I love it when stuff is free. <laughs> so, Bra oh, you never go wrong with free, man. Yeah. Brandon Daniel Brown, man, you are taken off so quickly. Uh, you, when when I, I first found you on on uh, Instagram, I thought, oh, man, this guy's been running a radio. It'd be nice to talk to another DJ, uh, and another person that's into music and such. And, and then here you've been doing this internet radio for a couple of months. What? And it's blown up, man. You, 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 yeah. You're, I, you're honestly, a you, many people ask me why or how it blew up. I really don't know. I can't tell you. I, I have to get honestly, I do have to say though, I, I really do feel it's because of Deuce Deuce. Um, yeah, but, just but, that interview is my first national. So I got to give a shout out to him and say, thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You made outlaw radio form to what it is today. Cause yeah. if he wouldn't have hit me up for an interview, right. I wouldn't have done interviews. Yeah, but you realize you're helping other people. And like I said before, as soon as you start helping other people, they're going to help you. I didn't think this podcast was going to take off. And then here, you know, every, everybody has a story. 
I mean, some people's stories are, are more interesting to other people than than other stories. But everybody has a story, man. And, and DJ Immortal, you started in a small town in, in humble beginnings. You got roughed up as a kid, and, and and you started rapping. I mean, do you have any of those raps in your pocket? How, how many raps did, did you have, or or did you have any uh, honestly, anything produced? I had about, uh... Honestly, what I did was back in the day, I used to have an old desktop. I used to do it like, I don't know, like I I don't remember very much because I got a really bad head injury. So I don't really remember very much gotcha. of it. I can only remember like a verse of my one song. And that's all I can remember that I ever wrote. And I used to do like 10 songs on stage. I don't remember anything. Oh, like I remember wow. doing them. But lyrics wise, when I look back at those times, I don't hear myself. I just see myself. Do you have and any so of that recorded? Like, I, any, anything produced? none of it truthfully like i said oh. i had it all done then but i've been through like three apartments since then and everything different laptops i look at it as a part of my life where it's like i i don't really want to be remembered as that i want to be remembered as the guy that started a radio show from scratch i want to and i, I don't want to sound conceited to all the listeners and no. to you but i've had such a rough life growing yes. up and even all the way up till now like, and I want to be able to be that guy where everybody that said Brandon Brown ain't going to be S H I T. He ain't going to be nothing. Uh-huh. He's nothing to be people. You better bump. I want to be that guy that can sit back, put on my customly made outlaw radio hat, sit down in front of him and be like, <laughs> what have you done with your life? <laughs> oh, wait. And it sounds terrible. Like when it, I'm a very nice guy. Like I'll treat everybody with respect, but when I've grown up, I've had people tell me that, oh, you're not, you're going to be nothing but a jailbird. You're going to go to jail because I was a troubled kid. But what do you, what, what do you think is going to be happen when you take a kid away from his family? You don't, he doesn't understand what happened. Throw him in a group home with six other boys that beat him up and throw shitty underwear on him and stuff like that. Right. When he's, you know what I mean? He, what, what do you think he's going to do? Sit there and be like, thank you, sir. May I have, a, may I have some more? <laughs> no, he's going to get angry and angry and angry and angry. He ain't going to know how to deal with it because he has no one to talk to. So he's going to blow up and be a little arsehole. And that's what I was. And, you know, I'm not proud of those days. But you can't, you, no matter what, you can try your very hardest, everyone, to forget your past. Right. You can try your best, too, but it's still going to be there. You can say, you know what, I'm going to make something else. No one can remember me from my past. But you're always going to run into that one person that knew you when you were a child, knew you when you were younger. So you got to embrace your past. I look at it as, like I said before earlier in this interview, everything in life happens for a reason, and I believe that. Yeah. Um, and for, for instance, how I met my wife. Um, my, me and my wife, we grew up with the same people. We never met each other, mind you, until we were older. My wife is 32. I'm 25. Yeah, okay? but you met in Brockville? Um, I met in Brockville, yeah, but the funny story with this, um, I grew up with these two guys named Kelly and Kenny Harper. They were my best friends growing up. She lived in this very small village, maybe 400 people. They lived there. We crossed paths probably a million times. We never talked or met, nothing, okay? It was like innocent bystanders. Uh, my abusive ex, okay? She worked with my wife at Burger King when they were younger. What? So, like I said, you know what I mean? They knew each other. She knows my my um. My Aunt Jean, she knows my Aunt Jean and Perf, like, really well. So it's weird. Like, we knew so many people. We had so much in common. We never met until my ex-girlfriend almost killed me. I was at my lowest of my lows. I was living back in my mother's basement. Yeah, yeah like, I lost my house, lost my two jobs, everything because of this woman. I was at, I was literally in the crapper. And how it happened was my phone glitched. And I mean, this guy's mom, people will be like, no, nah, you added her on Facebook yourself, <laughs> you know, but I'm going to be honest, guys, I, I didn't. My ex-girlfriend smashed my old HTC phone on the ground. Right. Um, it was half broken. Like it would work, but it was very, very glitchy. So I saw a buddy on the people you may know on Facebook <laughs> and I was spamming the button. And mind you, it wasn't the app guys. It was the old Google app. So if you remember that from a few years back, the toxic one, I was spamming the ad button. And it wouldn't work. Oh. And I'm like, Damn, phone add my buddy. Next thing you know, prrr, added everybody on my list. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. So my wife, she accepted me, and yeah. I, so I messaged her. At this point, her name was Victoria Greenhill, just before she became Brown. Right. Which now she's stuck with me. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see, right? No, no, so no, no, no. This that forever, was, ever. <laughs> so I, um, I messaged her. I'm like, I'm like, why did you add me? I don't even know you. Like, I was a very angry individual. I lost everything. I was just... Who are you? Get off my Facebook, right? And then she's like, what do you, th- excuse me? She's like, you added me, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, 
oh, oh God, because it was a few days beforehand, my whole phone glitched. I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh God. I'm like, so I looked at her profile, and I'm like, wow, she's actually a very beautiful woman. Yeah. And I'm like, and guess what? If I ask her for coffee, she's going to tell me to go F myself. <laughs> so what happened was, I, so I explained the situation to her. Like, I explained my phone got broken. Um, you know what I mean? My phone got broken. I'm sorry. My phone glitched. I added you, and I forgot. I'm going through a lot of personal stuff. So she said, you know, it's okay. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I was like, she's a beautiful woman. I'd love to take her out for coffee. Right. So I messaged her. I'm like, do you drink coffee? She's like, I don't drink coffee. Like, flat out, not even like, no thank you. Like, I don't drink coffee. And I'm like, spicy. I like it. So I'm like, okay, what about a beer? She's like, I don't drink beer. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, okay, I like that she's straight up, but it's like, you're not giving me like something to bite on There's me. No you know what I mean? There's no win. So, so then I'm like, okay, fine. You don't drink beer. You don't drink coffee. How about this? Let's go for, I want to meet up and hang out, go for a walk. I'm like, I would love to get to know you. So I'm thinking she'd be like, I don't walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> so she comes back. So she comes back and she goes, okay, sure. She's like, I work today, but what about, I forget. I it's been like almost four years now. So I kind of forget, but I, I forget what exact day it was. But she was like, yeah, okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll meet up this day. So I'm thinking, all right, cool. So she's like, where do you want to meet? And I'm like, Hardy park. So Hardy park is this little park has like a play structure, um, a big field, um, right by the waterfront. So you can walk around the water. And I mean, I think me and her, we walked around for a good, three and a half, four hours, man, just talking yeah. about anything and everything from, you know, what I'm going through to what's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's your favorite Ninja Turtle? And we Turtle? realized we had so <laughs> much in life, so much in common, man. Um, that, um, and when I found out she knew my ex, uh -oh. I stopped dead in my tracks <laughs> and I almost, I almost ran away. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I did like, I'm not going to lie. I almost ran. I looked at her and I started backing up, but she's like, no, 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 but I hate the, and she said the B word. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm like, really? Tell me more. <laughs> I'm just like, so what happened was I didn't think she liked me. I really didn't. Right. I, I really just thought like, you know, cause I told her everything, all my, all my personal stuff, what my ex did to me, what I'm going through. Oh. Like, I mean, I laid it on the line. I'm like, look, I have some baggage. I'm like, I don't have baggage. I have a duffel bag, so <laughs> baggage, okay? With a backpack on top of it. So, if you want to walk away now, that's okay. You can walk away. We can pretend this date never even happened. Right. And she's like, and then she looked at me. She's like, no, nah, I want to keep walking with you. I, you seem like a nice person. Uh-oh. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So what happened after that was we started talking some more after that. And I didn't know, even know she liked me. I guess she told me she was bragging to her coworkers about me. I didn't even know this. Oh. Never knew it. I'm telling you guys, you men, no matter how much they say they do, they do not understand women. I thought she was just a friend. I thought she friends on my ass the moment she saw me. Yeah, uh, you did good, <laughs> son. <laughs> the generosity of women. I I feel that uh, in, in my own relationship. So, <laughs> oh. so anyway, I look at it and I look back at that now. I remember exactly what she was wearing that day, man. She was wearing a blue a blue sundress, sandals, hair down. You know what I mean? And we are going on this this uh, September first will be three years together, and this October twenty eighth will be two years married. Sounds like some love right there, man. You got a good girl backing you up. And, and you know, I, you, you took, you're taking one of your likes and you're turning it into a job and you have, yeah, it's a big leap, man, to leave a, a steady job. Like, uh, I guess Procter and Gamble, but you, you say that one's closing down, but to leave a steady job and then to try and, and hustle and, and, and yes, the radio is a hustle. A lot of people think, oh, ah, radio, you're a radio DJ. You must be making bank. Even when I was a radio DJ in Miami, uh, you know, it, it, great ratings, you know, great representation, great. It, it wasn't money made on the radio. It was the, the, the fame of it, the, the notoriety. If I got noticed on the radio, maybe someone would invite me to their party and, and, and pay me to be there. So, yeah, you're saying you're not making any money on this radio, and yet you are you got this great girl that's backing you up, and, man, I'm so happy for you, bro. I'm so happy for I, you. I think it's honestly because she knows how much of a big music, uh, influence music has made, has been on me, right? Yeah. Like I said, my, uh, my nickname in high school was iPod. <laughs> like, you know, I, I was called iPod. I was had headphones on. Yeah. So... I think with that, my wife is more like, you know what, this is his passion. And I've got to interview people that I've never thought I would, man. Like, I sit back and, like, and I look at it, I try my best not to lose myself in it because I realize I'm technically working in the music industry. I've, right. I've already seen some stuff. I heard some stuff that it's like, whoa, like, really? But I try and stay true to myself and true to others. And that's why I look at it as I, 
I tend to, I do all the graphic designing myself. So the website, if you ever come across that, that is actually like my, like I made that, you know what I mean? Um, my you, wife, you better believe I've been all over your links, man. I, I, I've looked at everything that your speaker, your, your Twitter, your, your several Instagrams. <laughs> I don't know which one to put on there. I'm going to put, I'm going to put all the links on, on the show notes. So everybody knows what I actually with one, when one is, there's a lot of different outlaw radio ones. So I realized I chose the name. <laughs> there's a lot of outlaw radios that are like not even me yeah I'll, so, uh, I'll, I'll when try you go to put on all the, the ones you see one it, it's outlaw radio o for l so the letter o number four letter l mm-hmm. that's that's the one you'll meet with me it'll be like the outlaw radio with praying hands in the background and a blue background as well oh i got it <laughs> oh. so it's one of those things where i try my best to stay true like I, i'm not gonna i have a couple great interviews as well coming up like most of them are um, up-and-coming artists Yes. Like I try and stay up and coming because I love helping other new artists. I want to help help them. But I try to also for a rating standpoint, obviously you don't want to like I always joke on my show, you know, if it wasn't for the listeners, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing it because who wants to sit on the air and talk to yourself and play music to yourself? And you can just do that yourself <laughs> behind closed doors, right? Well, <laughs> so I have to thank all my listeners about Law Radio that tune in every week. I mean, I've had people tune in from very episode one to still today and they're like, Yo man, you are good. I love it. Um, I actually had a great message come in and this is one guy where I'm not even going to lie to you. Yeah. All right. I, I teared up because the uh, Muta Bill, he is uh, Napoleon from the outlaws. I don't know if you heard of that rap group, Tupac's rap group, the outlaws. You just told me about it. Um, yeah. so Napoleon, he's not a rapper anymore. He uh, converted to Islam, I believe in 2003. Mm. He did one last album that was like, in it, just a beautiful, I call it a soul rap. I call it soul rap. Because it touches you in many more ways than one. Um, I have him as a friend on Facebook, like legitimately him, um, his personal account. So I was on post links on my private account, you know what I mean? And um, after I after I started posting my rated art, he commented on it, being um, saying, oh, I just talked to his wife last night. You know, he seems to be doing good. Let me know when the interview airs and Whoa. let me know how it goes. So I ended up posting one of the links. I, I forget which exactly photo it is, but Ken Hussein comments on the post on one of my posters and goes yeah. DJ immortal, the be- one of the best DJs out there help keeping the legacy alive. Excellent. So me, that's an honor. So I screenshot it. I use the whole like messenger, little like crayon thing, circle it. <laughs> and I post on Facebook and I'm like, yo, like look who just said this. I'm like, you know, this is an absolute honor for me. If pot, if Puck's family is noticing what you're doing, you most definitely are doing the right thing. So I didn't, I didn't even tag Muta, tag nobody but me and the Outlaw radio team. Next thing you know, Muta comments. I wake up to this, mind you. My wife, I have to give her credit because me in the morning, I don't look at my phone. I'm dead in the morning. I'm like a zombie. <laughs> so my wife comes in and she's like, sits on the bed and she's like, bed. And it shakes me a little bit and just holds a, her phone in my face. I'm like, no, what are you doing? I'm sleeping. You know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So she's like, you need to see this. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, okay. Okay. So I open my eyes, you know, grab my glasses. Next thing you know, all that I see is Muta comment. And I want to say to everybody before I say this, it's not official. It's not finalized. We're still working out a date. Okay, guys, I want to say that off the record. Because right. I don't want to say the wrong thing. And then Muta hears this and goes, yo, no. Yeah. All right. Um, he commented below and said, whoa, now I need, now I need to get my, you know, I get an interview on your show. Yes, and I mean, I spoke up. I'm like, I'm like, oh, Muta, no, because that's the one interview where I don't even know if I can make it through it, okay? You'll I don't even know fine, if I can make man. it through it. It's just a conversation. So, um, You're fine. He, mind you, he has a bunch of businesses now. He's doing good for himself ever since he yeah. found his mom. He had a really rough life. Uh, for listeners that don't know, you know, this is all public, so I'm not saying anything personal. Yeah. His uh, parents got murdered at a very, very young age. Oh, he was in the house man. when it happened. Um, he lost his best friend. And uh, mentor Tupac, he lost his best friend, Yaki Gaddafi, which also was a member of the Outlaws. He passed away a month after Tupac. Sorry, two months, sorry. Um, he ended up, um, and also the person that killed Gaddafi was his blood cousin, so that was rough on him. Oh. Um, also, you know, he had a really bad drinking problem after all that. It's just, he, 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 he turned his life from bad to a uh, complete utter 360. And he's actually my inspiration on how I'm bettering myself. Um, I haven't switched to Islam or anything like he has. I found my own coping, my own, my own way of doing it. Yes. You but find your own path. He is a main reason why I, I turned my life around. And 
And he actually sent me a voice note, man, um, saying to me, so I was like, so I messaged him like, hey, you know, I sent you a message. He goes, hey, man, I'm just getting on a plane. I'm about to do a United States show. I'm going to uh, Nashville. Then I'm going to Philly. Yeah. When I get back, well, you know, we'll talk about a date and what, excuse me, whatnot. And um, I want to say, I've been noticing you putting in a lot of great work. And I, and I'm, and I have a lot of great work. You're doing a very great job. And I'm looking forward to coming on the show. And I sit back and I tear up because when you have your idol, someone you literally listen to to help you get through all your bad life, life endeavors, and you sit there. I looked at my wife. I'm like, why me? Why me? I'm like, I'm some white boy from Canada. Yeah. And she's like, you're putting in hard work. She's yeah. like, you're doing what you have to do. And you know what? This is your, this is your time. This is your calling. And she's like, you have been through hell and back in your life. And now you look, look at it this way. And she's like, look at it this way, Ben. 25 years, you deserve it. Yeah. You deserve every bit of success you get. And she's like, and this is good karma. Instead of karma kicking you in the butt, karma is blessing you. Just enjoy it. Just sit back, enjoy it. And I'm like, oh, I will. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> So I don't know the date for that yet. I, I messaged him a few dates and he told me like that would be too early or late because of the time difference he's in Saudi Arabia. Yes, sir. So I just told him, I'm like, look, uh, look, Muta, you send me a date and time and I will work with your schedule. I'll make sure it happens. Uh, currently, I'm waiting for a message reply back, but we're still in talks. It's just different time zones, right? So oh, yeah. you do what you have to do. When I did the one in Aust- uh, two in Australia, it was difficult. And the, and, the, and the few in England, it's yeah definitely difficult with the time zones. But you'll, you'll get it together. Oh, my goodness, man. Oh, Brandon Brown, it's coming around, man. Heck yeah, they used to call me downtown Brandon Brown. Now it's down. <laughs> now it's down, down, from downtown to worldwide Brown. <laughs> that did not make any sense, but all right. Yeah, um, oh, you can tell that the whole nervousness of the radio is kicking in now. Yeah, no worries, <laughs> man. I, I'm, I'm stalking your Facebook. I'm I'm liking the new digs, and I think I'm seeing the porch, uh, the the uh, porch in the front that you're sitting on right now. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, okay. I, I, yes, I, I'm. I'm stalking your Facebook. I'm looking at you. Uh, you're a very good looking guy. And yes, I've already seen Victoria's picture. She's a beauty, man. You did good, son. Uh, now you have. I a tat- want to say thank you, man. Oh yeah. You you have a tattoo across your chest. What does it mean? Um. So actually, I have. Uh, I have about. I have about five tattoos. Um. And I have no problem telling the one the one story. It's. It's. I've never told it publicly. But oh, okay. I do feel that this is probably the time I should. Oh. So I'll start with the easy ones. So I have Tupac, Tupac's logo. So for all the Pac fans, if you ever seen his 2003 Tupac Resurrection documentary movie, the logo that's in yellow. Obviously, I'm white. Putting yellow on your body is a waste <laughs> of money. It ain't going to work. So I had the logo in black. But it's the logo of San Tupac. Oh. Um, I have that just because right above my heart, just to know, like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. And I still say that every single day. I thank him. If it, his music saved my life. So it's only right to show some appreciation. Then I got only God can judge me. It was because of my ex girl. That's another one on my chest. Above, above my above, same side. Sorry, other same uh, position as Pac. It's on the other side. Right. Um, the reason why I got that one is because it's another Pac reference. It's a little bit about Pac, but it's mostly because when my ex uh, was doing that stuff to me. Um, a lot of people were like judging me being like, Oh, blah, 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 blah. You did this, you did this. And nobody would listen to the truth. Everybody was listening to her bull crap. Mm. People were judging me. So I walked into a parlor. Where I put in, um, this, I was listening to pop like I normally do. Only God can judge me on his all eyes on me CD. And it just was talking about all the shit. sorry, stuff he's been through. And I'm like, I just walked into a parlor. And I slapped a hundred bucks down a tattoo. And the guy's like, I'm busy. I'm like, if you do it now, I'll give you an extra, I'll give you an extra 40. Oh. So he's like, what do you want? What do you want? I'm like, all right. So I want, cause he wasn't even having a client. It wasn't like someone was there. It was just sitting there on his phone. Right. Right. And I'm like, I want only God can judge me across my chest, kind of in the style of writing out the tat- tattoos on my arm. He's like 140. All right, cool. Cause I was just like slapping money down. I didn't care. Cause at this point, you know what I mean? I had a stack of cash. I was living in my mom's basement for God's sake. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, I just wanted to, I wanted to take my pain on something else Yeah. to get a tattoo. Right. And I, and I, I saw that tattoo. It still means a lot to me today. Cause that tattoo made me realize every time I was felt upset that I was getting judged, I'd look down and be like, and look right at him. Only God can judge me. And I'd walk away. Sweet. Um, and I also have, um, a tattoo on my, 
uh, right forearm in memory of my Uncle Dan. He passed away. Um, he had lifelong diabetes. He'd, uh, so I have Dan, and then has 03-15-10, so March 15, 2010, and then it says rest in peace. Uh, he was like my father figure growing up. He wasn't really my uncle. He was just a really good family friend, mm. but he was always there for me, so I grew up always calling him Uncle Dan. Um, so I have to say, I know he's proud of me of what I'm doing, so I want to give a shout out to him from heaven. Um, also, and this is a touchy one. Mm. Um, so my buddy, Tyler, Tyler Walton, and I got to say, he, this is a touchy one for me, me and him, we grew up together. Um, my mom and his mom were best friends, like simultaneously, like best friends. So me and him grew up from childbirth together. Right. Um, he was born in 95. I was born in 94. Um, me and him grew up, we did everything together. You know, people would be in Brockville and they would go, if they saw one of us not together, they'd be like, yo, where's, where's Brandon or where's Tyler at? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So like people would be like, that's not normal. Right. Yeah. We never fought. We were like brothers. We never fought. We were genuine, like love. Right. Um, he was the kind of guy where he was upfront, honest, very quiet. If he didn't know you, he was very, very shy. But once you got to know you, he'd talk your ear off 10 times more than I'm talking yours off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what happened with that was, um, there was this girl that he liked, uh, there was this girl, sorry, there was this girl that another guy liked. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to tell the real story. A lot of people tell the summarized version. I'm going to tell you the real one here, guys. Okay. Um, I was there that night, and this is something I've never told live on the air. So this one is getting me pacing back and forth. But I realize I have to. I have to. You know what I mean? I want to cause. A, I want to make awareness for this. Okay. Okay. So this guy really. This guy really liked this girl, yeah. and Tyler was always at. Like he, we all call him James Dean. Okay. Um, we, we had a joke saying James Dean in the streets, James Dean in the sheets. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause he always had that slick back little weave going on, like chiseled face, like, you know, genuine, good looking body. You know what I mean? He was like, he wasn't like huge, like girls loving him, but he had looks, you know what I mean? Yeah. This other kid, I'm not going to say any names cause I don't want to do that on the radio. I don't believe in that. Right. Right. He ended up liking this girl. I mean, he was obsessed with her. And, um, she would always be like, no, you know, I'm going to call him, I'm going to call him Jay. Let's, okay. let's call him Jay. Okay. Okay. So that way the story makes more sense. So he, he, he'd always be like, Jay, I'm not, I'm not interested in you like that. We're only friends, but he was obsessed. I mean, like he would do anything to have her. Um, so Tyler was living with another guy named Franklin, which is a cool dude, uh -huh. Franklin Richards. They were living together. And, um, how it happened was, uh, he, they ended up, you know, I don't really know. I wasn't there, but they ended up doing their thing or whatever. It got word back to Jay. And uh, Jay was upset. And outside of a Tim Hortons, uh, long story short, it's a coffee shop, like Dunkin' Donuts, but Canadian version. Right. Uh, came up to Tyler and was like, yo, you, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to say the words, but I'm going to blah, beep, 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 kill you. Oh. So Tyler just was like standing there going, okay. Like, whatever, you're mad. It's Brockville. Nothing like that ever happens. It's Brockville. You know what I mean? It's a little hick town. People run their mouth and run away. Yeah. So we didn't think nothing of it. So about a week passed. Me, like I said, me and Tyler were like in the 70s, like together, you know, like peanut butter and jelly. We were always together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and if it was just peanut butter or just jelly, it didn't feel right. You know what I mean? So how it went was we were one night sitting there playing Xbox together just playing from GTA. We used to take turns on G Grand Theft Auto 4 on 360. I'd do a mission, he'd do a mission, um, and we'd just play it until we finished the game. Right. That night, we had about four missions to go. We, we, we never got a chance to finish that game. I've never picked up that game since. Oh. Never played it since. I can't, I can't do it. Um, he gets a text from Jesse. I'm sorry. Uh, Jay, whatever his name is. Um, and, say, and he says, hey, man, I want to say I'm sorry for everything that has happened. Okay, I'm um, sorry. I shouldn't have been upset. Want to come hang out tonight? Yeah, you know what I mean. But never meant him. And Tyler's like, "Well, I'm with Brandon right now." So Jay's like, "Well, I, I know you're with Brandon. You're always with him." You know, how about you guys come out to Lynn, which is Lynn is a little little town, which I said where my wife was from. Right. And uh, we'll just we're just by the truck. So Tyler wasn't a big drinker. Like if you gave him a beer, he'd have a sip or two. But you can tell he wasn't a drinker. So we went out there. I, I we just brought our Mountain Dew, a couple of bottles. So I drank. I drank a lot because it's hot out. You know what I mean? It was uh, April, but it was, that's normally one of the times like the heat is going on or it's cold. It really depends in springtime. Right. So long story short, I say I have to go to the bathroom. They're all telling him you should get up on the car and go car surfing. 
And I'm looking at Tyler, I'm like, man, don't be dumb, man. You can get hurt, don't do that. Yeah. And he'd always listen to me. So I was like, don't do it, man. Come on, don't, 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 don't do that. But after that, he said, no, I'm not going to do it. That's dumb. Listen to me, which I was like thankful for. So mind you, we're in a big field. So if you picture this, guys, you're in a field. Uh, there's a parking lot, but a field. So obviously, if you have to go for a pee, you can't just, and there's lights, like football, like baseball lights everywhere. So if you were to go around the corner and whip your pee bug out, Right. Everyone will see it. And, I'm, and I don't believe in that. There was ladies around. You got to be respectful, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you got to go. You got to go. So I'm like, yo, Tyler, I'm going to go take a pee, bro. I'll be right back, right? Yeah. So mind you, I'm walking across the field where the bushes are. And you can still see everything because of the lights. <laughs> and all I hear is, as I'm peeing, all I hear is, yeah, whoa. And then I hear, like, screaming, like him cheering, right? And I'm like, what the is he doing? Uh. I turn around, he's on the top of the truck. And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh. So mind you, I'm running back. Mind you, I'm just slowly finishing up because he was wasn't yelling or screaming. Then he's all I hear is, "I'm slipping!" Ah, like he went from cheering to like, "I'm slipping! Let me off! Let me off!" Oh. And um, so mind you, I'm running back, you know, trying to finish going to the bathroom, running back. He falls off the truck, hits his head. People, oh, that no. this is where the story stops for most people and say, "That's it. He passed away." Mm. No, I was there. I know what happened. My friend was still alive because he got back up on his feet. And mind you, I'm still running. I think I'm still peeing myself. I don't know. At this point, I'm scared for my best friend. My bro- <laughs> No, fuck story. Screw that, my brother. Right. Um, I'm running. I'm running. And mind you, I'm a, if you saw my picture, I'm a chubby guy. So me running, like, you know what I mean? You're gassed, you know? Right. So how that happened was uh, uh, he ended up standing up. And he, you could, he, I heard him say, yo, man, my freaking head. Like, his head was busted open, but he was still there. He was alive. My friend, right? Yeah. He was like, oh, my God, man, my head hurts so much. Oh, my goodness. But he was holding his head. Like he was, he, I feel if he, he would have survived that. He would have probably had to, you know, get some stitches, maybe some surgery, but he would have been okay. Jesse, uh, sorry, Jay flips the truck around, does a um, 360, revs the engine, and mind you, I start running faster because I know what he's doing. Yeah. He runs right over my friend. And oh. as he runs over him, my friend, I don't know how, my friend's a soldier's man. I'm going to tell you, um, if, it, if I had happened to me, I would have been done after falling off. Yeah. Um, he was still there. He couldn't move. He ran over his, um, kind of his abdominal area, so like right where his stomach and legs are. Yeah. So like he, he was there, but he was gone, right? So mind you, and Jesse starts, sorry, Jay, mind you, sorry, he keeps backing up. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to relive the story, and it's hard, but... Yeah. Um, I do a baseball slide. I grab my friend and hold him, like hold him Tyler, like as high as I can. I would have, at this point, I didn't know what my friend was doing. So, hmm. I didn't know. I, at that point, I was like, I'll take my life. I'll take my life for this man. Yeah. And I realized at this point, he didn't want to kill me. He just wanted to kill him. Because right when he saw me, I, I literally, the last thing I would have saw was the Ford logo. Right, stop right before my eyes. And, Everyone, I realized he was bleeding from his mouth and his head was busted open. I could see my friend's rich, you know what I mean? Um, I was holding his head in place, telling him, like, look, you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. He was muttering a little bit. He was like, you know, I love you, bro. Oh. Stuff like that. And uh, what happened with that was uh, everybody got in the truck and they left. I was the only one that stayed. People were yelling at me. to be like, come on, let's go. Get out of here. And I'm like, like... And then Jesse doesn't, uh, sorry, Jay just looks at me story and goes, if you stay here, you're going to be caught, you're going to be busted for this. And I'm like, no. Mm. I'm like, no. I'm like, because of his eyes. And I just said something to him. I don't remember. After that, I blacked out. I don't remember. Um, all I remember is my friend telling, like, muttering, don't leave. And he just told me, tell my mom I love him. He uh, took his last breaths in my arms, and that was that. I ended up... I had no phone at this time because I wasn't a cell phone guy. I hated cell phones. Right, right. I couldn't call 911. I was screaming for someone to help, but I was in the middle of the road in the middle of bum nowhere. You know what I mean? I was in the boondocks. And um, that was it. He was gone. People will tell you that he died in the hospital. He died. No, they just say that because they have to. He died in my arms. I had to go. I ran. I didn't get in any trouble. I told the police the truth that this guy did it. And I, I don't want to say, honestly, I ain't no rat, but if I'm, someone murdered my friend in cold blood, I, he's my friend. I yeah. want the guy to pay. It's either I go do something stupid or 
I tell the cop, you know what I mean? He didn't, he only got, he didn't even do any time. He got like three months for, for to murder my friend. Mm. He got reckless driving, causing death. And still to this day, I always, when I see him and he, I see him just knowing he got a five year job and at the end of this year, he can drive. He can have a normal life again. Well, my friend is sitting in the dirt, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the reason why I'm saying this story is because a lot of people, when someone happens to their friends, they go out and they get a gun or they, get a truck like kind of like this and run him over but uh, i want i want people to listen to this and hear this stop and think would your friend want you to go do something stupid like they did to them you, that can't bring your friend back guys i mean i've contemplated on many ways on what i could do to this young man what i can do to make him suffer but i look at it as you'll lose everything you even if you say you have nothing there's always something in your life you will have but memories this, is yeah. one thing that will get you by. You will see your friend again. I know I will. And I know that I have a guardian angel. And then I know my friend, my brother, Tyler, Tyler Jordan, Jordan Walton is up in heaven. And I know that he is blessing me. I already know that he's my guardian angel <laughs> guiding me in the right path. You know? Sweet. So you man. just got to stay positive the rough times and try to think, what would your friend do? What would your friend want you to do in this situation? That's what gets me by. That's why when I see this kid walk past me, it takes all my money not to grab him and throw him in front of a Mack truck. <laughs> but I don't because I realize Tyler wouldn't want me to do that. Tyler would be like, don't be dumb. You know what I mean? He'd be like, don't be dumb. It ain't going to bring me back, bro. Just remember the good times. Karma will get him very soon. It hasn't happened yet, but I believe in karma. So I look at it as, what would your friend do? And that's what you all got to remember. If you were to go do something like that, well, what's going what's gonna to happen? Is it's going to be another casualty and it's going to be a cycle people are going to come after you and then you know it's just let it let it be and you know what i mean just remember honor your friend's name yeah you're keeping live tyler's your memory alive right now uh, you, know. you know and that's what i look at it as my friend we actually always want to start a production company yeah. we always wanted to he was one of those people where it's like i want to do something i want to move to vancouver which is a big huge city here in canada and start it off so in his honor, I haven't really got it jump started yet, but whenever I do outlaw radio, I call it a mortal production. Yes. It's not something he wanted it called. He was another name that I forget, but I look at it as I'm not going to take his entire dream, but I'm doing it in his honor. Yeah. And my wife, actually, I got to give her credit. She helped me figure out the name of that immortal Productions with a Z. There's no accounts for it on social media. It's just something I include with outlaw radio. Yeah. So when I upload a video, I put like, um, presented by outlaw radio and immortal production. It's just something my way to honor my friend the past. Yeah. Man. Brandon Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal. That was a rough story, man. And it's honestly not the first time I've ever told it on air. I've never even told it on um, on my show. I never have. I, I ended up um, referencing Tyler, saying, rest in peace. I know this song, you'd love it, and i play it for him. Yeah. But that story I've never told anybody but my wife and my close friends. Thank you. So I think that's the first time I ever told that whole Top story worldwide. Well, thank you for sharing that. <sighs> Brandon and Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal, Outlaw Radio. You, man. you. <laughs> represent. <I see> <laughs> Canada six one three. Ontario. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. So where do we go from here, man? Where where do, what's next for Outlaw Radio and Brandon Daniel Brown? Wow. Honestly, what's next is I'm going to keep doing my thing because I look at it as um, right now, um, if, like I said earlier, where I'm going to try my best to transition to two nights a week to Wednesdays. Cool. So if you notice, I do have, if you look on our Facebook event page, which yeah. by the way, everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is all Outlaw Radio O4L. You type that in, you will find us. Big praying hands, uh, you know what I mean, with a blue background. Yeah, what's the O4L? Um, we're transitioning in. Uh, O4L actually is like Outlaw for Life. Um, I, gotcha. I it's kind of honored by the Outlaws rap group because they had such a big influence on me. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's kind of like Outlaw for Life, you know what I mean, type of thing. It's also because it's also another way for me to, like, okay, I play old school rap, I play Tupac, Outlaws, Biggie, KRS One, all the old school like that. And a lot of these Outlaw radio stations are Outlaw Radio, and that's it. I want to try and take my brand and yeah. say, splice it off. Like, there's our brand, and there's the other ones all bunched together. Oh, yeah. So that's why I put O4L. Just that way it's something easy for someone to remember, but also takes us from everybody else and makes us separate. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you're doing it right, Brandon. And I appreciate you chit-chatting with me 
Whew. Is, it, is it okay before I get off the air if I say a couple shout outs to some people? Man, you could tell this is your podcast. Take take as long as you want, man. I want to say straight up to the Outlaw Radio team. I know I said this already before, but I couldn't stress enough. Um, the Outlaw Radio team, I want to say, guys, thank you so much for all the hard work you put in with Outlaw Radio. Um, they're, like I always say, there ain't no I in team. If you're a team, you got to work as a team and keep each other updated. So, Graham Kent. Carlos Johnson, Thomas Berryman, my beautiful wife, Victoria Brown, and uh, Graham Roy, also known as G-Ram. I want to say, guys, you are the best Outlaw Radio team. And I got to say, thank you so much for all the hard work. I got to give one huge also shout out to my Uncle Dan and my best friend, Tyler Walton, up in heaven. I got two of the best guardian angels. I know you're here somehow looking at me being like you crazy bugger you did it you know what i mean <laughs> your, your tables have turned you're now having an interview but i want to say i know i have the two best guardian angels thank you guys for all you've done i know they have a part in this i really do um i want to give a shout out like i guess separately from the outlaw radio team my beautiful wife victoria brown we've been through hell and back we've seen some crazy crap along our three years that normally would take a couple break them apart in like more ways than one. But she, she stuck by my side. You stuck by my side. So for, for years, I mean, like we went through stuff that would make like literally would be like, a I take a couple 10 years ago through, but she stayed by my side supporting me. Even when I'm a grumpy arsehole, when I'm on my man period, she still deals with me. So I got to say, Victoria, I love you. Thank you so much for everything you've always done for me and always supporting my dreams. Um, I got to give a shout out to my mother, even though we had some problems that in our past, but you know, my mother, she, she gave birth to me without my mother. I wouldn't be here on this podcast. I wouldn't be here putting in work. So I want to say, mom, I love you. Thank you for everything. And also my mother-in-law, Shirley, um, even though she's not my real mom, but she's like my mom, she's always there to support me. Um, when I, when, even when I feel like I can't do it. Um, so thank you, Shirley, for always supporting me. And to all my friends and family, um, that if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. My cousin Ashley out in Kingston, Ontario, you've always been there to support me. I want to say I love you. And um, also, one last thing I want to say to all the people that's ever doubted me. I want to say, you know, I'm not going to be rude to you. I want to say, you know, I always told you that I would make myself something special one day, and I'm on the fast track to doing that. Um, thank you so much, actually, for all the haters that ever hated me because you fueled me to keep doing what I've been doing and you fuel me every single day to keep making my show better. So I want to say, haters, thank you because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am today. Everything in life happens for a reason, guys. So thank you to the haters. Thank you to the Outlaw Radio team, my wife, my cousin, my cousin, um, my cousin Ashley, everybody that I named, Tyler, my Uncle Dan, Thank you all for this, for always supporting me and being there for me. Uh, whether you're alive or passed on, I know you're still here. I love you guys so much. Man, that's a good way to uh, to, to look at it, Brandon Daniel Brown. You're doing the work, DJ Immortal Outlaw Radio, and, and you got Victoria right by your side. I can tell she was probably sitting there almost the whole uh, time that we were talking. Am I right? She was, yeah. Like, I ended up uh, sitting on the back deck halfway through, and the mosquitoes were uh, <laughs> sucking my blood off. So I had to come in. So I, I got to admit, I'm standing in the kitchen. She's sitting there. She's trying to pretend like she hasn't heard it because oh, she says she, she wants to listen to it after it's already uploaded to uh, your uploaded to your resources. But I know she heard it, and I know she's blushing because I saw her look up and her cheeks are red. <laughs> Well, that's beautiful, man, <laughs> and that life together, and and uh, you, you need to unpack some boxes, man. Fill that fill that house up. <laughs> that's what we got to do. We actually got a majority of them packed up now. The crate now. The hard part is cutting them open, <laughs> throwing them out, and hopefully the garbage man will take all the empty boxes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Brandon Daniel Brown, don't be a stranger. DJ Immortal Outlaw Radio, man. You're you're, you're doing uh, it, man. One thing I want to say, guys. Oh, go ahead. We are live every single Friday night. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to hear any past broadcasts, I want to let you all know we play old school rap music. So if you're looking for rock music, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> that, that isn't us. But we play old school rap stuff that if you're older, like, I mean, just like, uh, just like he mentioned, the uh, Run DMC, we play a little bit of um, Run DMC all the way to Tupac, the Biggie, House of Pain, KRS-One, LL Cool J, back when 
Outlaw back when, sorry, rap was good. So remember, yeah, tune in KRS every single one, Friday man. night. Yeah, you got educated rapper right there. Uh, Heck yeah, man. I always call I always call him the big nose rapper, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's the real shock G, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, well, you know, yeah, Shock G, <laughs> man, and, and Humpty Hump, man. What a what a what a great gimmick where he was two rappers in one. That's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, yeah, man. He, he There's just, actually a rumor that the nose passed around the entire group too. <laughs> And you, all you got to do is change your voice a little bit, and you're Humpty. And, and, man, Shock G was smooth as can be. All right, before they go, man, can you remember any of your rap, man, and, and maybe throw a little, throw a couple of uh, words out for the people? All right. Um, I can remember one. I'm going to be truthful. Do it. I just got to get in the groove for a second. Um, all right. I'm just going to, like, put it on. I'm going to put it, like, put the, off of the phone down, but just kind of pretend I'm not on the phone. <laughs> I can't promise I'll do the best, but all right. Here it goes. I spit rhymes with a lyrical mind while I'm sitting here trying to unwind. Every day I got music on my mind. Fuck trying to unwind. I'm just gonna kill you with every rhyme. Show you how this whiteboard deserves to shine. I'm already on my sixth line. Tell me what you think. I'm a lyrical mind. My whole life I just dreamed of getting signed. So everyone, I'm a gun pointed at your chest. About to turn your ass into a bloody mess. Pop a hole in your heart just like you did to me, D. I just hope you see the shit better stop. Uh, the shit better stop. I'ma push through the pain. I'ma make through another day i'm a great dane yet yeah, going insane i'm a monster that will haunt you that's honestly all i remember brandon daniel brown dj immortal that's that's a good way to end the show right there man <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for being on the podcast what well, makes you famous like I, yo you're most certainly welcome like i said guys it wasn't the best but you know what i mean i haven't been rapping for a long time so please cut me some slack i put you on the spot man i did that that's all me uh you did good that's man. all good man <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. And one last shout I got to do is to you, man. Do it. Thank you so much to What Makes You Famous for giving me this opportunity to share my story. And I did a lot of contemplating on telling the story of my friend because, yeah. you know, that's a big part of what happened to me. Oh, yeah. And you know what I mean? I got to say, thank you so much for having me on, man. It's an absolute honor to have to have this interview, to be able to talk about my brand. Um, I want to ask your permission if it's okay if I can play uh, this interview live for my audience as well. Of course. I will give you full credit, so that's all right. I just want to I want to help promote you as well, man, because it's an absolute honor. No, of course, man. It's 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 all yours, and it, this is your okay. podcast, man. I appreciate you. I just want to ask because it's I didn't produce it, right? So if you were to say just for me, I would I would have no issue with that because <laughs> I I understand as a DJ myself, right? No. Brandon Daniel Brown, Outlaw Radio, represent. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on, man. It was an absolute honor. I'm looking forward to hearing myself talk for, <laughs> for a little bit. Bye Thank for now. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye now. Well, there you have it, party people. Brandon Daniel Brown, DJ Immortal, Outlaw Radio. Man, what a story. That man's had some, he's got some street cred. Let's put it that way, okay? He had no choice but to become a rapper. Either the, you tell the story or the story just like weighs you down. So he told the story, gets it off his chest, man. It's got to be cathartic. It's got to be uplifting to keep the memory of your friends alive that have since passed. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon Daniel Brown. And why are you blowing up? Because you're promoting, you're picking other people up and taking people with you along the way. That's what you do. You help out other people. And that's how you help yourself, man. I mean, radio, yeah, you're never going to be rich. I mean, there's only a handful of, of DJs that make bank, you know, in the radio business and even in the the dj club business they make millions yeah a handful handful and, and and even then it's not for long you know so keep doing your thing and you got victoria backing you up congratulations on that congratulations on the new digs i appreciate you so much man brandon daniel brown look him up ask for him by name dj immortal outlaw radio Take a listen to it every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check it. The links are in the show notes. Do it. And, uh, yeah, and keep going forward. <laughs> That's it for this edition of the What Makes You Famous program. I encourage you to tell your story. If you want to tell your story, 
Give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at RadioWhat.com. That's it. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. Radio What, the music you want. Hey, guys, this is Shelly G with a fast fact. The British, the highest per capita spenders on music, buy 7.2% of the world music market. Do you have a fast fact? Share it with us at Interactive Radio, RadioWhat.com. Hey, Keys Dan. What you doing? My line. I'm playing the best music by request. 24 hours a day. Click on the request tab at the top of RadioWhat.com. RadioWhat.com. RadioWhat.com.